Hi, I'm Jono, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. Photographing your work well is the single most important thing you can do for your career, apart from actually creating the work. So in this video, I wanna show you a few ways that you can photograph your work depending on the resources and equipment that you have available to you. Also, a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. It can be easy to dismiss the importance of photographing your artwork, especially if you're hypercritical of it and feel like your artwork isn't worthy of being photographed. But it's important to change that mindset. Every piece of art is worth being photographed, even if it's just to show where you've come from. Another mental trick that I've used as well is to view photographing your work as a separate practice to producing your work. It's something that you need to practice and get better at, so you might as well use the works that you maybe aren't as proud of to make sure that you're nailing it for when you are ready to photograph works that you are proud of. Having that record of your work can be really useful for later on in your career. I know it sounds obvious, but the images that you take of your own artworks are often the only point of reference for people seeing your work. Even if you've begun to show in galleries, the amount of people that might see your work in a gallery versus the amount of people that see your visual representation online are vastly different, and it kind of just shows the scale and sensitivity you should have approaching photographing your work. For this reason, it's important to make sure that the images that you're taking do your work justice. Whether you've got a professional lighting rig or just a cell phone and a window, there are a few main principles that you need to follow when photographing your work. The first fundamental is lighting. When I started out, I was just using my cell phone camera and natural light from a big window in my room. Just make sure to look out for shadows being cast on your artwork. If you're using natural light, it can be really tough to get uniform lighting, so identify where the light source of your artwork is coming from and try and replicate that with the angle that the light is coming from when photographing your artwork. The second fundamental is to remove all distractions from around your work. You're setting a scene, so avoid photographing it from a bed or a table because that can distract from the artwork itself. Use a clean piece of paper that has the opposite tone to the background so that your borders can be nice and crisp. My third point is about the angle that you photograph your work from. Make sure that whatever you're using to photograph your work, whether it be a phone or a camera, that it's perfectly perpendicular to the page so that when you crop it, the proportions will stay the same. If you get this wrong, the corners of one side will appear bigger than the corners of the other and it will distort your work slightly. After a while, I saved up and I was able to buy my first DSLR. The fundamentals stay the same, but now you have a few more options at your disposal. Okay, so I'm trying to get the camera as perpendicular to the artwork as possible. So I'm actually just gonna use this, this light and move around the artwork. The goal here is to try and get uniform lighting across your work without any reflection or glare to create distractions from your artwork. The tip that I learned early on is to try putting your light source at a 45 degree angle or even more. If you were to have your light source directly behind your camera, it would reflect directly back into the lens and cause quite a bit of glare or distractions. So if you shine the light on this side of the work, you can see there's quite a lot of glare on the side of the artwork. So you're gonna use this portion over here to represent your work. Then if you move the light around, you can see now this side is distorted. There's a lot of glare. So you're gonna be using that side. And what you want to do is take a few photographs of the different angles of light, have them as, at quite a harsh angle, and then stitch them together to try and remove any glare. Then you'll get a uniform representation of your work. And lastly, make sure that your hands are clean. I can't count the amount of times that I've gone to photograph my work only to see fingerprints that I've left behind. The last option and the best case scenario is to have your work professionally scanned. I'm fortunate enough to have my work scanned at a really great place here in Cape Town called Art Lab. And they've done a really good job over the years. They specialize in fine art scanning and have a large flatbed scanner. So this isolates the work, shines two very bright lights from either side, what we're trying to basically mimic with this lighting setup. And then they have a top-down camera that takes a perfect photograph of the artwork. Scanning your work is basically the ultimate way to capture all the very fine details and subtle nuances of your work. I've seen people recommending home scanners to try and capture their works and I'd be really cautious before I recommend this. Home scanners have some built-in software that automatically enhances and sharpens the image and can represent it in an artificial way, which you don't want. Another thing is the way that home scanners are designed is they, they push the artwork as flat against the glass as possible and have a ridge on the sides to really make sure that it's completely flush. 
usually your artworks will probably be bigger than the home scanner and this can actually crease your works and damage them. So depending on the home scanner, I'd really avoid this, but there are some that do a decent job. I think just do some research before you throw your works into a scanner like that. One last little tip for anyone starting out, and this is quite important, especially with what we're talking about in this video, which is photographing your work well, is that you're building a portfolio. Something that can get in the way of that is taking on too much commission work early on in your career. There's a bit of a, a balance between trying to get that guaranteed income from commission work versus not having income while you're creating that work. But the pro is that you get to build up your portfolio and you get to tell the story of your career over time. Before I end this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. I've been working with them for quite a couple of years now and they've played a huge role in helping my career out. Not only in sponsoring these videos and helping me maintain this channel, but more importantly, early on in my career, I was looking for a platform to showcase my work and design a portfolio and to make it easy for clients to get in touch with me. And I felt that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them or set up an online store. And most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use this offer code and get 10% off your first purchase. So there we go, that's pretty much how I started out with photographing my work and the slow development of that process, eventually going to the stage where people were scanning my work for me, which is kind of the ultimate quality that you can, that you can ask for. But I hope this is helpful for anyone starting out and wanting to document their career and their process. These tips are really, really important. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I really enjoy reading those. And if you found this helpful, leave a like. It helps the channel out in a huge way. As always, thanks for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.